Today on an all new Dr. Phil. Have you tried to lose weight and failed? Ball dropped. <laughs> You're connecting flight to the show. We saw a Spank store, Panda Express, and we saw a bar, and that's a big girl trifecta. Ready for your old body back? I feel like people think, what happened to that girl who used to be so beautiful? Don't miss this show. Do you believe you can change this? Because you can. Let's do it. Is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by, Dr. Phil. I try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. In five, four. I am not giving up on you. Dr. Phil, I need help losing weight. I have tried diets after diet. I am fed up and I am desperate for your help. Please, Dr. Phil, help me get rid of my jiggle so I can sizzle. Woo! I'm ready to marry my best friend, but I need your help to lose this weight. Please help me lose this weight. Can you help me? I need help. Oh, can you help me? Help me, Dr. Phil. Please help me. Help me, help me, help me, Dr. Phil. Are you just like them? Yes. yes. If so, you are not alone. But let me tell you. Today is a changing day in your life because all that's going to stop right here, right now. Today, we have filled our audience in the studio with people just like you at home. All combined, everybody here in the audience has tried and failed a staggering 2,000 diets. And my first guests are no different. Teachers Candy and Lindsay say their friendship began when they met at their school's Friday treat day. And they've been packing on the pounds ever since. I can explain my weight problem in three words. I am fat. How many calories do you think this is? It is good. It is fattening. I met Lindsay three years ago at the school we teach at. We have a Friday tradition at school. People sign up to bring treats for everyone to share. We always joke around at school, you know, we don't need to take sick days. We need to take fat days. <laughs> Sorry, can't come to school today. Uh, As my pants, my pants will, will not budge in. <laughs> When we go out to a restaurant, magically the glass of wine sometimes turns into a very sugary margarita. Margarita. Hey! Oh. Yay! Ooh. I could bathe in that. And I am a champ at losing weight, but I am a world class record holding champ at gaining it all back. I could just take the bread and go ahead and put it directly on my ass. We're not friends that go running together unless it's a beer run. <laughs> and then I'm your girl. We're going to have the um, appetizer combo with the zucchini and the mozzarella and the calamari. And bring your side of our homemade ranch as well. Oh, perfect. Oh, okay. We never turn down ranch. Uh, <laughs> Our friendship isn't based on food. It's just something we share, and the weight loss struggle is something we both share, too. It's not the food that we share, because I don't share. <laughs> Hashtag, Hashtag big girl problems. <laughs> let, let me get this right. Did you two miss your connecting flight to the show? <laughs> Because you were drinking beer and eating at Panda Express at the airport? Ball dropped. <laughs> we saw a Spank store. We had to go in there. We saw Panda Express, and we saw a bar, and that's like the, the big girl, girl trifecta. <laughs> Hashtag big, big girl, girl problems. problems. Oh, my God. It's Have all I got... of them right there. Have I got an uphill oh battle here? Yeah. Okay, so... What the hell is Fat Girl Day? When you have to call in to work and call a sub... We're both teachers, so we have to call a substitute because we can't get our pants to butt. <laughs> we're we're kidding. We don't want a button to fly off and give a kindergartner a concussion or anything. <laughs> what is Treat Friday? You go to school The and devil is it, what Treat Friday yeah, is. Yeah. yeah. We're in the South, so everybody will bring casseroles and... Um, they try to cupcakes. out cook each other. They try to out cook yeah. each other. It's a um, big deal. That delicious mm -hmm. sourdough bread that Jean makes. And the ginger snack cookies that Sissy makes. Oh, oh my God. We love so them good. too much. You can see them here, here, and here. <laughs> and here. <laughs> I was listening to your logic. You say every Monday 
one of you stops and picks up a sugary Starbucks type drink or breakfast at Chick-fil-A for yourself and the other person. So yeah. what do you mean you restart every Friday <laughs> on Monday? One of you picks up this stuff before you even get there. We do wait until 7.30 a.m. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that whole hour yeah. from 6.30 to 7.30 really goes great. It does. <laughs> <laughs> and we are, you know, pumped during that yeah. one hour. <laughs> do you work out? Um, <laughs> not regularly. Not regularly. Which I'd one of you sent us a picture of your gym? <laughs> that was me. <laughs> now, tell me the truth. How did that towel get there? <laughs> My husband put it there. So I would look like I actually cute. He loves me so much. He <laughs> probably did. Oh my God. Oh. Do you work out? Not there, no. Do you work out anyway? Um, you know. <laughs> Do you work out? Sporadically. The answer is no. <laughs> Uh, okay. We did run in the airport, though. How many gates can we run before we throw up? Guys, we can run four, four gates. <laughs> What's the longest period of time you have ever had any discipline with regard to weight control? Two weeks. I lost 40 pounds last year, so I had discipline with what I was eating, but not with working out. Or, you know, I'll work out like a maniac and eat like a pig. I never do the both at the same time. Me too. Which would probably be a really good idea from that look on your face. <laughs> <laughs> which is uh, the key. I'm going to go out on a limb and guess that's what you want me to do. <laughs> no, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> you two didn't come all the way from South Carolina to tell me you were overweight. Both of you are eyes wide open about how this happened, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The good news is I do have exactly what you're looking for. So. But you need to understand there's something different. You, you get involved with me. I will haunt you till the end of the earth. <laughs> We've heard um, sphincter clinch. Yes. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> Just okay. Like All right. Uh, you, uh, yeah. okay. I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, you've heard the old saying, hindsight is 20-20, yeah. right? Well, Lindsay and Candy have perfectly clear vision on how they got where they are today. But I want them, you in the audience and you sitting at home, to turn that 2020 hindsight forward to see with perfect clarity where you want to go when it comes to your weight. And I've spent a decade doing research and for the first time in 10 years, I've written a book about weight loss. Now, why did it take me so long to write my second weight loss book? Because I finally have something new to say, and it's called The 2020 Diet. Yay! All right? Uh, what's that mean, and how is it going to change your life? Well, I'm going to tell you after the break. In my 20s, I actually was so obsessed with weight that I developed an eating disorder that really warped my relationship with food. My weight issues didn't start until college. Some of my sorority sisters would talk about my weight. The girls actually had a Facebook group where they would post negative things about my body that was really hurtful to me. In my way, 204. I about peed my pants when I saw that on the scale. I weigh, drum roll please, 242 pounds. So, got your beat there, sister. I am my own worst critic. I'll say, oh my gosh, your boobs are like basketballs, or your ass is the size of Montana. This is the one thing that I have not conquered, and I'm ready to do it. With Dr. Phil's help. Now, when I did this book, 2020 Diet, we conducted a national survey as part of the book. We did it on our own and discovered that nearly half of those people that lose weight gain 100% of the weight right back. That needs to stop today. Now, before the break, I told you I've written a book called The 2020 Diet, Turn Your Weight Loss Vision into a Reality. 20 Key Foods to Help You Succeed Where Other Diets Fail. I wanted to give a clear vision and a doable plan 
on how to get you what you want. It's full of emerging research and theories designed to get you where you really need to go. Here's what the 2020 diet is going to do. I want to give you 20 foods for 20 days that are going to do something that's going to increase your body's thermogenesis. There's really emerging research that says you can eat these foods that increase your burn rate, awesome. that can help you feel fuller when you eat, and that have a time release effect. I looked at your excuses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we found that nearly 40% of the people said that lack of willpower is the top reason they fail. You say ice cream is calling your name from the freezer. It does. You can hear it. You can hear yeah. it calling your name, right? <laughs> so that means if, if I'm going to do something that works, I've got to figure a way to deal with the cravings. You also said you hate dieting because you get bored. Yeah. Okay, so when I look at the rebellion triggers, why people rebel against diet, boredom is a huge one. Temptations, a huge one. You, and you do that. You know, we've had fun here, uh, but the truth is both of you know you hide behind humor, right? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Now, yeah. these friends not only share a love of Chick-fil-A and strong margaritas, they also share a much deeper connection. And it's the reason behind all the humor and laughter. I experienced my first diet when I was 10 years old. I can just remember my mom always saying, you know, you're such a pretty girl, but if you would just lose five pounds, you would be beautiful. In my 20s, I actually was so obsessed with weight that I developed an eating disorder that really warped my relationship with food. I'm tired of weight and body image even being an issue. I do use humor to cover things up and to make myself feel better and make it seem like it's not that big of a deal. My weight issues didn't start until college. Instead of packing on the freshman 15, it was like the freshman 50. Some of my sorority sisters would talk about my weight. The girls actually had a Facebook group about me where they would post negative things about my body. I would see a sketch of me with a arrow pointing to my spare tire that was really hurtful to me. After college, I gained 70 pounds, and now I'm up night. It feels like I'm in a body that's not mine. If you had told me you're going to be on Dr. Phil talking about how much weight you need to lose, I would say, you're crazy, I'm hot. And now I'm saying, Dr. Phil, help, I'm not. People have said things in both of y'all's past that hurt you, right? Oh, yeah. And, you know, I make cards, just kind of summary cards, to be sure there's things I don't forget. <laughs> They're, they're called my blue cards, and I, they're cleverly called that because they're blue. <laughs> and this is this is yours. And I wrote down Facebook group dedicated to making fun of me. Mm -hmm. And what did I write down next to it? Bitches. B bitches. <laughs> but you know what you did? You took over for them. You started repeating it in your mind. They were making fun of you, and you started making fun of you. And you never quit. And you started making fun of you, and you never quit. And you laugh. So much comedy comes from pain. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And there's power in language. And mm -hmm. the things you guys say to yourselves is important because there is such a connection between self-image and body image. And when your body image goes down, it pulls your self-image with it. It shouldn't be that way. You're not a worse person because your body image is not exactly like you want it to be. It shouldn't go together, but it does. And then you cheat everybody in your life. We were talking about and that. You both know you have a bad internal dialogue. Well, I want you to both listen to what my next guest says about herself. She refuses to have the wedding of her dreams. She refuses to walk down the aisle with the man of her dreams because she says she doesn't deserve it. And that's why I am so motivated to write this book and to change your life and your life in every one of you. I want to give you the power to change all of this. We're going to meet her after the break, and you guys are going to listen with both ears.
friend and I went into a bridal store and I was told that they don't carry anything as big as I am and it just crushed all of my hopes in that moment. I don't feel worthy of Patrick's love. season is here and all of you know what that means delicious food and weight gain you know you gain like 50 60 percent of the weight you gain the entire year in the next few weeks it also means that when this season ends diet season begins well my next guest Kate is no stranger looking for a quick fix but Kate is on a mission because she says she refuses, and in fact, she says she doesn't deserve to have a wedding ceremony to make her marriage official until she loses a few pounds. Take a look. I refuse to have a wedding ceremony until I'm comfortable with my weight. I don't feel like I deserve the wedding of my dreams. A friend and I went into a bridal store, and I was told that they don't carry anything as big as I am, and it just crushed all of my hopes in that moment. And I just, I broke down and cried. When I look in the mirror, it's hard to see any good in me. My face is too fat, my cheeks are too thick, my hips are too thick, my legs are too thick, my jeans don't fit. The heavier I am, tying your shoes gets harder. Going up and down the stairs is a struggle. I really feel my weight when I go to drive. The steering wheel comes down and it touches your thighs. I don't feel worthy of Patrick's love. I love her very much. I see her for what's on the inside, but she's perfect. I feel consistently judged to the point that I don't go to family events. I don't want my husband getting any comments at work. He has a picture of me when we had first started dating, and his friend was like, oh, you mean Kate was actually hot at some point? We started planning her wedding, and she actually told me that she doesn't want to have a wedding if she doesn't lose the weight. I honestly cried that she wanted to cancel the wedding because she won't feel beautiful. I'm desperate for Dr. Phil's help. I want to be everything that I always dreamed of. I'm not living up to what he deserves as the mother of his children. I want to feel like the mom that my kids deserve. They deserve a mom who can go out and play with them. I can't do that. Okay, Kate, how'd you get this way? Oh, goodness. Um, thank you. <laughs> I had two really horrific pregnancies. We ate out a lot. I ended up on bed rest twice, and I gained 100 pounds with my first pregnancy and about 50 with my second. Okay. Now, at this point, and you're okay if I say you're height and weight, right? You're 5'7 and 304 pounds. Yep. And um, you're, you have a body mass index of 47.6, and obesity is is 30 or greater so you're morbidly obese and um tess you don't like what it's doing to her self-image because you love this girl right oh yeah she avoids going to places doing anything really <laughs> and you say you can't stop eating mm -hmm. um if i feel sad i eat if i feel happy i eat if i feel nervous i eat and it's just mm -hmm. very emotional issue so we ask you about your Excuses for not having a ceremony, and I made a list of those, too. I got yeah. blue cards like I do for them. So you don't deserve the ceremony. Your husband deserves better. You're not worthy of his love. Why did you say, I don't deserve the happiness that comes with being healthy? Because I feel like, I don't know, I guess other people deserve more than I do. Mm -hmm. If you're right, then what? You don't deserve a husband, you don't deserve happiness, you don't deserve, then what do we do? I don't know. Um, I really don't. I struggle with that a lot. Um, and it puts me in a really, really hard place, especially with my kids and my husband. If you have this negative internal dialogue, you know, you, you generate yeah. the results you believe you deserve. And, yeah. and you know that to be true, right? Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, um, I have an incredible husband who tries very, very hard to push through that with me, but it's, mm -hmm. it's a really bad struggle. Yeah. Well, here's the problem with that. Here's the problem with emotional and stress eaters. 
Emotional and stress eaters are 13 times more likely to be overweight or obese. And 80% of people list emotion or escape from emotion as their number one trigger to eat. <laughs> so that's kind of a vicious circle, right? How many people here eat emotionally? Raise your hand. See, you're not alone. See, it, it, it all comes together. You know, I, I said I, this is the second book I've written about weight management. And the other one was The Ultimate Weight Solution that I wrote like 10 years ago. And in it, I talk about the seven keys to weight loss freedom. Look at number one and two. Right thinking and healing feelings. There's a simple thing here. People are not overweight because of eating. They're overweight because they abuse food. You just have to understand that you, you, there, there are different kinds of hunger, okay? There's physical hunger, mind hunger, and habit hunger. Physical hunger is when your body's saying, hey, come on, my stomach's barbecuing my ribs here. We need food. Blood sugar's going down. I need food. I need nourishment. We need energy. Mind hunger is when your head is saying, you know what, I'm upset. I need ice cream. It never rejects me. <laughs> and habit hunger is when you eat situationally. It's like 5 o'clock, I get home from work. I always eat when I get home from work. If you did nothing but separate those three things out, you would be halfway home. I'm going to give you 20 foods for 20 days that are going to change the way you deal with food. But you've also got to get your thinking right. You've got to get your mind right. We've got to heal your feelings. Okay, we're going to talk about that. And in the meantime, be thinking about where and when you have heard somebody say something to you or about you that stuck with you. Plus... They each say they dropped their pounds and their excuses using a 2020 diet. Can they inspire Kate to do the same? All of that and more when we come back. When I was in elementary school, I was bullied a lot for my weight. Oh, yeah, she's a fat cheerleader. When she steps on her box, it sinks into the ground. It made me feel like less of a person. losing weight on the 2020 diet. The biggest thing I've learned is portions and mixing certain foods so that you are actually letting your body fuel yourself. Prior to this diet, I was a big stress eater. I was a chocoholic and loved sugar. Now I'm eating a lot healthier and cleaner and I love it. The plan garnered immediate results. I approach eating certainly in a more conscious manner now and actually enjoy my food more. What was unique about this diet is I really never felt like I was starving because I could eat all of the foods. You just had to eat them in smaller amounts. But I never felt like I was really deprived or starving. 2020 diet has changed my life. I have much more energy. My confidence and self-esteem have boosted. It's really given me the tools to make a lifestyle change that's healthy and beneficial for my whole family and myself. I'm proud of those results, and although all the pounds dropped and inches lost are great, it's the return to health for the 2020 diet test group that has me most excited. And we're going to talk to a couple of those success stories in just a bit. But first, in order to get where you're going, it's critical to drop the negative baggage from where you've been. Now, no one needs to do that more than Kate. Take a look. When I was in elementary school, I really kind of started to chunk up. I was bullied a lot for my weight. Being told I was fat when I was ugly. Oh, yeah, she's a fat cheerleader. When she steps on her box, it sinks into the ground. It made me feel like less of a person. I lost friends because I didn't fit the mold of what everybody in the group looked like. I was too overweight to be friends with people. I think I use my weight as a shield to protect myself from getting hurt. It's a lot of, um, a lot of years of emotional buildup. Okay, you know, here's the thing. It's astounding how people can say things that stick with you and, and have such a lasting effect on how you feel about yourself. And we have what are called automatic thoughts. 
in our mind. You know what I mean by automatic yeah. thoughts? What? They're the ones that just come up out of nowhere, the ones that have stuck with you, that give you how you sort of feel about yourself. They just come up. <laughs> yeah, and, but what you don't know is how often they can come. Like a, you might hear a bully say something to you one time, and you might actually repeat that yeah. to yourself neurologically 10,000 times a day for your entire life, like a tape playing in your head over and over and over until it just indoctrinates you. And you've got yeah. to turn your ear inward and hear those things. And you think, why are you talking about this with a diet book? Because I don't want you to lose weight. I want you to lose weight and keep it off. I want you to lose weight and gain confidence. I want you to lose weight and gain wisdom. Yeah. I want you to do this the right way one time so, so you get it off and keep it off. So you, you, you've, got to, you, you've got to do that. And so I've got to change your thinking. Do you think you can change this? Do you believe you can change this? With some help, do you think you can change this? I think I can, yes. Because you can. Earlier, you heard from the participants of the test group uh, that followed every page of the 2020 diet. And I asked two of them to come here. Uh, because I wanted you to meet some people that can do this. Cindy is here. Cindy lost 38 pounds and 27 inches. Where Cindy, stand up. Uh, this is Cindy. Now, and congratulations, Hi. by Thank the you. way. Good job <laughs> on doing that. Um, and Jesse, stand up. Jesse here lost 46 pounds and 25 and a half total inches. Cindy, what was the trigger for you? I mean, work stress and, you know, how do you keep yourself from not being bored and just going eating more chocolate or yeah. those things? All right. And this is a three-phase program, by the way. Like, there's, there's phase one, uh, which is a, a five-day phase, and there's five foods for five days. And then you go into uh, phase two, and you love phase two. You said, I want to live in phase two. Why do you like phase two so well? I think those were all the foods I naturally tend to eat or I liked and knowing how to put certain foods together so that it lasted longer and you know the right portions were all important tools I didn't have yeah. before. Did you ever feel hungry? No. What surprised you the most about this because you made amazing change. Yeah. Uh, you got me all emotional. Uh, <laughs> so, the, I guess it was just getting used to eating at roughly four hour intervals and then also for me it was a lot of uh judging like sitting and thinking am i hungry or am i bored did you use the hunger fullness scale yeah D did yeah. you actually do that because I did. in the beginning I, yeah I, I think that is really important there there's a hunger fullness scale it starts at one where you're weak and unable to concentrate with a hunger headache extremely hungry stomach growling non-stop all the way down to 10 so full you're sick, nauseated, and miserable, and you've all been there. You've just eaten yourself sick. And the ideal range is to stay in here. You don't ever get in the extremes, and that's so important. And I love what you said about combinations, and I love what you said about flavors, because mm -hmm. there are combinations uh, so the foods stay with you, and you do get the flavors that you want. Well, but yeah, especially in phase one, the portions were a lot smaller than I was accustomed to, but it forced me to actually chew the food and taste it and, you know, taste the flavors and that sort of thing, and it helped me a lot. And isn't it nice to feel a sense of mastery where you feel in control? <laughs> I mean, you know that, you, I mean, you control the food instead of the food controlling you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know how much your heart works every day? No, nah, tell me. How many miles of vessels does your heart have to pump your blood every day? Your school teacher, this is a test. Three. She Pardon me? Three. Three miles a day? I teach kindergarten. Give me a break. <laughs> I teach two plus two. Yeah. Hey, what would you guess? I don't know. Eight? I don't know. Eight? <laughs> Good one. The average person's heart pumps your blood through 60 thousand miles of vessels a day <laughs> if you are significantly overweight add an extra 18,000 miles a day of vessels 
It means your heart's working 30% harder if you are significantly overweight. Pumps wear out, girls. I'm just saying. Next, in just two years, she went from competing in fitness competitions to running from being fit. We're going to meet her after the break and add her to this conversation. We'll be right back. I feel like people look at me and think, what happened to that girl who used to be so fit and beautiful? I can't really look at the competition photos anymore. I have gained 60 pounds since the competition. Yes, Nicole says she's gone from one extreme to another when it comes to her struggles with weight. It was just a little over two years ago that she took extreme measures to get a body that her mother says left her unrecognizable. When I got to college, I decided to sign up for a bodybuilding competition. I went from 140 pounds to 118 pounds and from 29% body fat to 9% body fat in four months. I worked out for three hours a day. My diet consisted of 900 calories, no sugar, no sodium, no fat, and no carbs. The last three days before the competition, I couldn't drink any water at all. My brain was shutting down without any liquids. When I got on stage, I had to put Vaseline on my teeth because my body was so depleted of water that I couldn't even smile. I placed 13th out of 65 girls. With the transformation that my body went through, I felt more confident because I finally had the body that I'd always wanted. My body's never been the same since I got off stage two years ago. But now Nicole says that fit body is long gone, and sadly, she can't bear to look at photos of her former self. I have gained 60 pounds since the competition. I can't really look at the competition photos anymore. I hate the person that I see in those photos. My daughter Nicole right now is the heaviest that she's ever been. I recently went to go see a plastic surgeon for a liposuction consultation. The plastic surgeon turned me away. I was extremely heartbroken. I hate showering because I'm reminded of all the fat that I have. I hate my thighs, hips, love handles, and stomach. It's all way too big. I feel like when I wear rings, my hands even look fat. I don't like putting on lotion either because that reminds me of all the fat that I have. Well, I'm 22 years old and I'd love to be able to wear a size four again. I would love to be able to wear shorts again and feel confident in a dress. When I'm on campus, I just see all these really, really skinny fit girls and I just feel so like a misfit. You're so beautiful. You have so much going for you. It breaks my heart as a mom to see her so hard on herself because she has so much to offer. I feel like people look at me and think, what happened to that girl who used to be so fit and beautiful? What, what do you say to yourself now in the condition you're in now? Every time I look in the mirror, I'm like, oh, like, still fat, still obese, I'm still gross. You say you think when people see you, all they see is a fat girl. Yeah, I feel extremely judged by a lot of people, particularly people that I became friends with after the show. So what do you want? I would just love to be lean and muscular again. Because mm -hmm. one of the things that I talk about in the 2020 diet, our bodies have what I call a set point. Okay. There's a point that you're supposed to go to that is your natural set point for your body in terms of what you will weigh in a normal, natural sort of way. Yeah. And if you get into that range, because let me tell you, all of you girls out there that say, I want to get back to what I weighed in high school, okay, we're, we're talking amputation <laughs> here. You have to be realistic in choosing what is your ideal body weight, what is right for you. Yeah. And then go to that place, be healthy in that place, accept yourself in that place, and, and, and live with it. Doesn't mean you can't look fabulous, doesn't mean that it can't, but you've got to be realistic about that. For you, I, I think you're flirting with what is called body dysmorphia. At your age, and with your constitution, your ability to have a return to health and to get into a really good body mass index that would be a good set point for you and a healthy point for you is so attainable, 
you're within weeks of being where you would be really, really happy and comfortable when, you know, someone like Kate looks at you and just wants to slap you. <laughs> um, <Love it. laughs> don't you want to just slap her? Love it. <laughs> I, I did ask a good friend of mine, a good friend of the show, to come here um, because there's something that I would like to offer you to do and this is Miles Adcock right here, and Miles is the CEO of the Onsite program. And Onsite is on a beautiful ranch outside of Nashville, Tennessee. And I, I want to do some things with you to help you get your body under control. But at some point, I, I would like to offer you to take a, a couple of weeks and really go involve yourself in one of the workshops that uh, Miles and, and his therapeutic team put together to really help you hit the reset button on all of this so you don't stay obsessed with this, you don't get into body dysmorphia, and, and you don't lapse into some type of eating disorder because I think that would be really great. And Miles, you guys could really help her with this, could you not? 100%. And where we come in is drilling down on the first two of those seven as part of the 2020 curriculum, the mind and the feelings. Mm -hmm. And we want to help you get a jump start on that. That sounds fantastic. Yeah, Thank I, you so I, much. I, it would be great. Listen, 2020 Diet is not a crash program. It's 20 foods for 20 days. And it's, it's three phases. And, you know, that's what these guys were talking about. While you're doing it, you're working through the book on the things of healing the feelings, the right thinking, cleaning up your environment. And these things, little things, it seems, like the, the seven keys. I brought everything over from the book I did 10 years ago, like impulse eating. You got to clean up your environment, but there's got to be good things there to eat. People that get hungry eat so you have to have something there to eat you need to eat yeah. it's not good to be starving don't starve yourselves it doesn't work you'll rebel we did a national survey as part of this to figure out why diets fail and i addressed every single point in this book why diets fail and came up with a strategy to attack that and it's all right there for you and so i want you to do that then i want you to do this Close. fair enough Definitely. all right next getting started on a weight loss journey can be tough so i got some words of encouragement and a few surprises up my sleeve we'll be right back i believe we can create moments in time in which all things wrong can be made right. All of my guests today are starting on my 2020 diet today, and we're gonna be checking in with them periodically to see their progress. And believe you me, you are going to see progress. You are going to see progress. Progress, 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 progress. You are going to see progress. Uh, because a lot of the 2020 foods can be made into smoothies, I want you guys that are going to start on this to have a new tree ninja and ninja blender. The ninja blender duo has tons of power and can crush through ice and whole foods in no time and maintains all the nutrition. Okay? The auto IQ uh, T technology remembers how you like your shake, so with the push of the button, It'll blend it the way you like it every time. And so you can keep track of your fitness. I want all of you to have a polar loop activity tracker, uh, which is worn on your wrist, and it tracks your activity 24-7 from sleeping to running. It knows what you're doing, and, <laughs> and so will I. <laughs> And it provides guidance and motivation to reach your activity goals. Uh, the 2020 diet is not about the numbers, but so you can keep track of your progress, I want everyone to have a Taylor Smart Scale. It not only measures your weight, but also estimates body fat, water percentages, and muscle mass. 
I'm going to give that to you four and everybody in the audience. Okay? about this book. It is the 2020 Diet, and uh, this is uh, available at The Book Nook, which is my book company. It's published by Bird Street Books, uh, which is my son's publishing company, and it's available today at thebooknook.com, and I want everybody in the audience to have a copy, so you're all going home with me. Today, and a special thanks to Miles Adcock. Thanks so long. We'll see you next time.